And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, let's introduce our players here in the southwest position as the Red Terran. We have got MVP King currently tied up with this individual spawning in the northeast as the Blue Zerg. It's Johnny Rico. And Toon Valley, of course, a macro focus map for both of these guys usually does resort into a very fast game or a very long game, depending on how Johnny Rico, more so than anyone else, wants to play this out, whether he goes for a two-base all-in. Uh, but upon saying that, I guess King could go for an 11-11, a double barracks rather uh, sort of attack. But the way that he's been playing this out so far, that doesn't seem to be how he's taking the approach uh, to actually bring down Johnny Rico. Well, and in the last game, you know, where Keen certainly looked like he was beginning to compound some advantages, Johnny Rico, uh, you know, was, was very persistent about getting those bases up. Never really attacked that fourth base, but, you know, it just mined, mined, mined. And uh, there was one instance where there was an attempt to land the command center at the northwest position, but it was blocked by a Zergling and, uh, and some creep being thrown down there. And really, at the end of that game, the endurance kind of came down to the economy in that uh, Johnny Rico, in that late game, like you mentioned, the place where he feels comfortable, where he wants to be, he just had the ability to continue to supply attacking units to uh, go after it again, again, again. I think that uh, looking at how this series has been played out is that Keen needs to go back to the aggressive dropping and multi-prong harassment that he did on Antigua Shipyard, for example, where he was dropping in the main, dropping in the third, pushing through the middle all at the same time, because that seems to be, uh, out of watching Johnny Rico uh, through the entire of this tournament, that's his weakness, is dealing with different drops and attacks while trying to keep his main focus on his army. And he does fall to that a lot of the times. And, and if you think about the previous game we just saw on Cloud Kingdom, is that's not what Keen did. Keen played to Johnny Rico's yeah. strengths, which is just a heads-up direct fight, which Johnny Rico's very good at doing. He's very good at controlling. and has pretty good micro in that, too. So, I mean, on in Tomb Valley, you're looking for Keen to maybe try to amplify his drop capabilities a little bit more? I think that initially he should set up his economy really, really nicely. So going for any sort of triple bar uh, triple command center play, whether it be uh, before or after gas is taken. So it looks like it will be after gas is taken. So absolutely still the same uh, harassment process of Heli and Banshees here, um, which are, can be quite strong on this map considering that the third is quite far away, um, but then just absolutely power his economy. And then in that mid stages before his two, two upgrades are ready, that's when he starts to hit this multi uh, multi-drop style of play well already here we're starting to see some developments as we get double extractor uh, or get double refinery going down for keen he started his command center on the low ground scv is going to get out of there seeing that the hatchery is finished up and the pool was <coughs> already uh already up and operational so now the queens are going to be coming out too at first and another two queens queued up on both of the hatcheries so you're seeing that coming out. A pretty typical start to how he's been going. Now we're having the uh, reactor go down and the factory is being built. And Johnny Rico did, you know, play very greedy previously where he was able to get those double upgrades out before layer. Um, this time around, Johnny Rico is taking double gases immediately. We'll have to see how he's going to, you know, map out exactly what he does with that gas momentarily here. But already, Johnny Rico has overlords almost in the right position, ready to go in at that seven-minute mark. And an on-in-tomb valley is actually a very small main base, so it's going to be rather easy for Johnny Rico to see whether it's a double factory, whether it's cloak or not really early on. Uh, now we have the SCV chased out and uh, the overlords are in position or at least getting into position as you mentioned they're gonna have the switch over for the factory to the reactor and are we going to see well right now we have the uh, double extractor for johnny rico as uh starting to get up uh, quite a bit of gas here he'll uh, get his speed i'm guessing almost immediately and there it is and are we going to see him go for a quick third there the drone is starting to move out and uh, should be plopping that down right now. I love Keen going for the command center here uh, because yeah. if you think about it, uh, the, the Cloak Banshee was dealt with this time and I think that Johnny Rico may tighten up his defense. So he may not go double upgrades first, he may go layer first. So we'll have to see how he's gonna map that out to just make sure he is able to defend a little bit better here. But upon knowing that, Keen actually just gonna go for a third command center initially here, which with the Hellions, he'll still be able to get the initial harassment done. 
Um, just not, he doesn't need Cloak to get the same results, and he's going to have a third command center faster because of this. And uh, the Overlord is obviously going to be seeing all of this go on right now as he uh, sees the switch over to the tech lab. And the Marines trying to go ahead and get rid of this Overlord before he puts anything else down. But it looks like he's going to throw down one Rax and then on the uh, reactor a second Rax. So going for tanks pretty early here with the Siege. And now that he's got the Tech Lab up on the Rax, he can start his stim. There it is. These Hellions moving out here are going to at least, I guess, pinch the hatchery. They're not going to be able to do much. There's some Lings that are working on uh, those rocks, but he's got to be careful. Going to have to pull out. Double Evo about to finish up, and their speed is done. So he might be able to go in and clean out those Hellions. And I love the early tanks play um, here because what he's going to do is build up the tank count really early on. And then with the third command center, he'll lift up and plant it down for a very, very early saturated third base. Um, that is going to power his economy a lot harder than it would be saving up SVs that aren't really mining efficiently on the oversaturated main bases. And then just going for double engineering bay immediately after just getting a handful of units. So it is greedy, but at the same time, safe play here by Keen. And Johnny Rico, um, so far, as you said, setting up those double evolution changes and will immediately be looking for 2-2 and just playing a very standard game to begin with. And the Starport's getting its reactor right now. So uh, drop potential could uh, be coming up here pretty soon, but you'll note that the lair's already been started. Bainley Nest going down as well for Johnny Rico at a point where he's usually uh, beginning to put that down. And the third base is starting to get droned up and the, uh, the uh, rocks have been taken down between these two bases for both players, and that means Keen's gonna have that third set up relatively quick at this point. And it looks like six roaches are coming out here, and to be honest, um, you know, Johnny Rico knows that the third command center is down, so he's not building them defensively. He's gonna actually try to break down this third base, I think, and without supply depots walling off, protecting these tanks and com combat shieldless marines, uh, this actually could do quite a bit of damage. Bailings are being morphed, um, and they're in a defensive posture, but will be used aggressively. And I really like what Johnny Rico is trying to accomplish here, trying to bring down Keen from his economy high horse. Is he going to be able to do it and get over there in time, however? We're starting to see that depot wall go up. There's at least one tank there and a couple more at, in reserves at the natural. I mean, there goes the third depot. Um, with the, Well, the roaches are actually the only things coming forward. The banelings and the zerglings still hanging in the back. They clear out that Zelnaga tower. And it looks like he might just choose since he's been uh, since he's basically been seen to not go forward with this. And there's a double medevac load up here at the natural, heading off to the north side of the base. Yeah, very interested in why he morphed those bailings. It, it delayed his uh, plus two carapace and plus two attack. Um, simply because everything was delayed the gas, but maybe Johnny Rico, uh, you know, wants to, to try something a little bit later on, but it's too late now with the supply depots done. Double medivacs, as you say, do get scattered though. Oh no, they don't yet. They don't. Oh, sorry, the Ling doesn't see it. And uh, this is going to be interesting to see where these are going to go down. Yeah, I mean, the good news is that Johnny Rico has a ton of coverage over here uh, above that fourth base, and he is starting to move out just a little bit. Actually, then he, I think, sees the threat coming forward. He moves a lot of his units back. He really wants to save this hatchery as well. But where is that drop going to go? It's heading to the third right now, and look at how quickly Johnny Rico responds. He can actually hightail it over to the main, but that would give time for Johnny Rico to, uh, to basically rotate over to that position. And it looks like those drops will be thwarted. And a massive mistake here by Keen for getting the armory. He's stuck at 1-1 oh. as Johnny Rico flies forward with 2-2. Two -two. And, you know, we saw how important the upgrades were previously for Johnny Rico, helping him take the fights cost efficiently. But right now, it looks like Keen, despite, you know, not getting the armory, has still got a good army size because he hasn't really slipped up in the macro department there. And he's starting to clean creep. Is Johnny Rico ready? He does not have bailing speed. So this is going to be a little bit difficult to engage correctly against tanks with these bailings. Yeah, I mean, in fact, he almost has to hit when it's not sieged up. And this army is uh, rotating around to the back side. Is he going to come in from the back? There's one tank sieged up. He's going to hit it from all sides. There the tanks do begin to siege up. The Banelings trying to get in there, but really their hit's not that effective. It's the roaches from the back that do a little bit of damage, but are chased out by the tank. Splash, and I think that this uh, hatchery is in danger of going down. 
It is indeed still not 2 2 being researched. Where is it, Keen? It is finally coming down, but great little attack there. Uh, unfortunate mishap of not having uh, bailing speed there as Johnny Rico trying to get out a faster hive off three bases, trying to get the ultras coming down faster, which he will get. But in turn, he immediately takes losses uh, with that fourth base going down, trying to yeah. catch some units out in the middle, but this is never going to happen without bailing speed. No, and I mean, the only thing that's really saving grace for Johnny Rico right now is the fact that, as you mentioned, that armory was forgotten, and plus two uh, for uh, for the Terran bio units are on the way, uh, where plus three has already started. Another hatchery kill attempt coming down here, and he didn't send his entire set of units trying to come from the back. There's a fungal to stop those Marines, but he will manage to keep that hatchery alive. And this is going to emphasize the uh, the strength of Johnny Rico taking these uh, heads up fights. And I think the way that Keen's going to have to play this out with such delayed fights, uh, such delayed upgrades, sorry, is slow pushes like this off creep, not committing everything. But he needs to be dropping more, I think. Uh, a drop to yeah. the back bases right now would be so efficient to do. But he's very, very so concentrated on bringing this hatchery down. He really is. And it's at half health already. And uh, he's certainly throwing away some units to get the job done, but killing a few infestors and a ton of lings uh, uh, as a result, he's going to most certainly take down this hatch right here, and that's going to put his opponent back on four, but not even a full mining four. This north fourth base for Johnny Rico is just now getting back up, and certainly he is being forced to play a defensive game. I mean, look at the tank spread out here by Keen. He's getting set up how he wants to get set up, but those four ultras are about ready to hit, and uh, he may go in for an assault once those spawn onto the playing field. And this is the, the ideal time to come back, take a fourth base, and start dropping around the map. Uh, and, you know, Keen can still hold map control. He has the Zelnoga Tower. Johnny Rico without Creech Spread has no idea where his opponent's moving. And he's trying to use links as scouting methods instead of Creep because he wants to know what's going on here. Uh, and as 2-2 finishes, Keen is going to move up now to take out this fourth base once again. He's going to siege right on the corner here, which is going to make this very, very cost-effective for him. Oh, and he sieges up at the perfect time. This army, it looks like it's trying to swing around to the south side so he can go in for an attack. That base has already been canceled, but he doesn't want to commit yet, and Johnny Rico uh, wise to do so. If he waited possibly for his 3-3 to finish up, he's going to be that much more powerful, and he might be setting up for uh, some sort of an interception here of these units, so he's got to be careful about when he is sieging and when he is unsieging. And without creep, this makes it really easy for, for Keen to get away with unseaging a lot and moving around a lot more. And Johnny Rico's greedy style of play, trying to exploit that Keen was playing greedy with his own third base, has not been working out for him. But he is about to have fully upgraded Lings and Ultras um, as their 3 3 is about to finish compared to the 2 2 only of Keen. And Keen's going to go in for this yet again, just pick, picking off a few of these units. He is not sieged up, so he's going to have to try to kite these units back in order to get some siege damage. And is he going to go for it? There's the unseaged. The Zerglings see it. He might just swell in here, but he re-sieges up. And it's all going to be about the uh, inf infestors and their fungals, and whether or not he can keep these uh, alive for a while. But really kind of in a strange position. Some queens going to be killed off here. Looks like he's trying to march down and get a full surround on this army. He is indeed. He's going to try to go in here. There's a lot of Marine Marauders. Where are the investors? They're all dead already. So Johnny Rico will be able to clean this up, but he's going to take a massive amount of losses in trade. Yeah, he's going to lose one, two, uh, three, four. Ultras go down. He's left with three. This bio needs to get over there. Is he going to get a stim off and get it? No, he's not. And now this also seems to be a good time, Apollo, to try to go for those drops to, you know, your opponent. You know they're going to be trying to get up a bunch more lings, a bunch of ultras. They're going to probably try to focus it all to where the army is. It seems right now a medevac sneaking in and getting some damage done could be incredibly helpful right now for Keen. Johnny Rico did manage to get 10 or so lings or more down to the fourth base of Keen, which was unprotected. And he did get 17 SCV kills, so that really slows down Keen a lot, who could have just won the game outright if he hadn't taken that economy hit there. But that will slow down Keen a little bit now as his minerals are starting to hurt. But without the creep spread, it's still very difficult for Johnny Rico to take fight. And right now, though, 3 3 is not quite done for these Marine Marauders, and he's unseized! Oh, Unseed is going to get all of that. He goes in for the surround on the bio. Let's the Ultras take care of those tanks and any reinforcing units. 
And there are a ton of medevacs left over yet again. And is King going to find himself in a similar position they did last time? Uh, we're going to see Rico uh, go ahead and get out of there. And that was a smart move. Try to save those ultras as many as he possibly can. He's putting up another base. He's also got that eastern pocket base finished up as well. And he better be careful. He doesn't want to lose these ultras. This bio. And this is a very weak point for Johnny Rico, right in the middle of transitioning or building up those Broodlords. And it looks like Keen is pushing hard now, taking a really solid position here. Low ground, high ground is maintained by Keen. And he will bring the space down as Johnny Rico evacuates immediately. Super awesome positioning, super awesome army movement here by Keen. And he does need a fifth command center to come up here because his main and natural is almost mined out. So he has to think long term here as well with extra star points and extra Vikings. Yeah, I, I mean, I would imagine. And do we see the first Vikings come out? Yes, we do. And that means there are going to be, well, those will be the first two out on the field. Uh, we have the Terran now swinging around through the back. Keen looking if he can attack that fourth again after taking out that pocket east. Uh, it'd certainly be great if he takes this down as well, and he's going for it. He stims up, he spreads out his unit as much as he can. He's got tank seized in the back, and it is going to go down, but the rest of the army says, that's fine, I'm going to knock on your front door, buddy. And this is gonna be weird because Johnny Rico shouldn't really go for that because he'd lose everything just by the reinforcements and the army coming back here. There's no infestors, there's no broodlers. But oh, we got a bunch of marines underneath the broodlers, pick one off immediately. And I have no idea, they walked their way around. Johnny Rico allowing a weakness on the west side of his army that bring that down. Only two, or two more broodlers, sorry, do join from the back. The Viking count starting to climb up once again here for Keen, but he's had so much excellent presence on taking down these hatcheries throughout the game. Yeah, I mean, Rico right now, look at his mining bases. He's really saturated over it. His natural with just a little bit of minerals left. He's trying to put that northern fourth back up. He's got this uh, new base at the northwest position up now, and that really is going to be key to his continued economic success. Meanwhile, on the other side, do we have another orbital coming down? We, we don't. We just basically have this uh, southern base for Keen and uh-oh this base has been seen and it looks like the Terran player is going for it he is gonna go for it it's a very tense moment here Keen needs to spread really really well there's no infestors remember so once the Lincoln Ultras go the Brutals are easy able to be taken out yeah and this is a hard one to actually go and he's moved all of his drones how is he going to choose to attack this he uh, is just trying to get as many hits off there with his Broodlords as he possibly can without sacrificing them a lot of damage right is being done, but... This is really bad for Johnny Rico. This is such a bad position. Look at the spread of Marines, Marauders, high units on the high ground, picking up in medivacs. The Viking spread, this is such an awful engagement for Johnny Rico. Yeah, I, I mean, he's continuing just going over and over. The Vikings stay alive. He's got nothing really combated with. One Corruptor in the back. The bio forces uh, do begin to move forward, but those Vikings doing so much damage. 16 medivacs DJ Wheat. That's a lot of medivacs there wow. to keep these units high health. And it looks like the Vikings just raining the air at the moment. And he can always retreat back to the tanks because there's no full growth to lock them down. And another hit to the Ling count. And Johnny Rico, every time he dances with this army, he gets hit by the tanks. But now they are unseen. And Johnny Rico does go in to take the fight. The best opportunity to bring this down. But it really doesn't matter. Plus three marauders making sure work on the ultras. And Keen looks like he's going to hammer down Johnny Rico. Oh, yeah. And there it is. Now he's just focusing down each of these. And if you look at the income tab, it's 680 to 14 in terms of mineral income coming in and that is just not going to be enough to sustain what he needs to in order to battle off this constant aggression coming out from Keen. The Broodlords are pretty much non-existent now and there it is GG and Keen